Hello again. Now we're going to look at context managers. This is a class you can make following a certain pattern, and then it works with the with keyword. First, we're going to study raw file I.O., which we saw before. We'll take a little glance at it because we're going to look at an old-fashioned way to deal with opening and closing of files because it introduces the keyword finally, which is part of the try, accept, else, finally, and then the context manager, which you'll see is a really great way to do the same thing. With the with keyword, it's very easy to open a file and read it. We saw this before. We'll just take a quick look again. In F name, we have a string, which is ramsu.txt by default, with open the file as open file. So in this indentation, the open file is open. When the unindentation happens, it closes. The open file object has the label open file because we put it here in the sequence of events. And then we read each line and print it out, being careful not to let the default new line happen or it will be double spaced. Okay, you remember that. To do a thorough study of our try, finally, else, except sequence of events, we have to be sure we're able to raise our own errors. So here we are raising a runtime error. That's the keyword, raise. You say that and you give any of the errors that there are in Python. And in parens, you give a string that you like for what happened. These exception types, all of them, are in a hierarchy of classes, and we'll be looking at that before the end of the class. You pick any one that you like, and what are the built-in error types? Well, take a look at the magic built-ins with the dir. And most of the upper cased things are, well, okay, not none, and you'll see in here true and false. But otherwise, these are the errors that you can choose to raise a reasonable sounding error when you want to raise an error. Now we'll have a look at the try finally. In this one, file two, let's look at our main clause. I'm importing sys down here, which breaks any style guide. But if somebody is importing this file too to use this print file, they don't want to import sys. They have no reason for it. So I'm only importing it in the magic main clause. We're going to run main, and we're going to run it on the first argument. Unless there is none, then we'll accept what's waiting there as a default, ramsu. Now notice that here we have a try except that we're wrapping around our call to print file. And in our print file, we have a try finally. There are two versions of how to use finally. Here's one. Try finally. The finally goes with the try. If an error raises in the try clause, it goes into the finally, and then it re-raises that error and it gets caught here in this exception. Finally, is going to happen if we get into the try. If we don't get an error in here, it happens. Closes up that file. If we do get an error in here, it happens. Closes up that file. But also, it re-raises the error. Notice that when we have the open here all by itself on line 14, that could raise an error to get caught here and print the info. Otherwise, we're going line by line. We'd like to have an error raise here so that we can see the functionality of the finally. However, to do so, I would have to kick my hard drive at just the right moment, maybe destroy my hard drive. I won't do that. That's why we learned the raise keyword. File 3 is the same as file 2. It's just that the architecture is a little different. And it has a little extra detail in that print file has a second argument. Fail on read, which is false by default. So by default, it's the same print file. But in this one, the opening of the file happens here in print file as well. 
this try except was in the main clause in the previous module and this try finally is as it was so when we open the file and that was successful we go into this try and we're going to read it line by line as we did before but if this is true fail on read then we're going to raise an error the first time we won't and so it'll be exactly the same as before we go into the finally now this time i'm printing finally so we can see that it went there and i close it if this error happened it'll get re-raised after the finally where it'll be caught here in this outer except and that info will get printed so try except catches an error out of here if the file couldn't be opened and out of here after it goes through finally and then to catch it again in our main function we're saying what we're doing is we're doing it we're going to call print file and then we're going to do it again with fail on read and we're going to do it again with a non-existent file okay so the first one is just great we see that finally at the end everything went right now we're doing fail on read. So we're going to print the first line. Ramsu knows this. And then it crashes at the second line. It goes into the finally. Then it raises that error, which gets caught again in the IO error in line 15. And it says failed while reading. Here we're calling print file on an absent file. And we get the error immediately and nothing happened around the try and finally we didn't get there okay that's finally there's another form of using finally and you have your choice you see here in this print file i have try except finally all lined up in the same indentation so when we get a fail on read here we go into the except and then the finally and when you look at the output you see that Reporting the exception came before the finally. I don't know if that would ever matter to anybody, but that's what happens. The problem is, with this form, if the open crashes, we go into the exception and print it, and then we go into the finally. Now realize that when the open crashed, that happened on the right side of the equal sign, so the identifier file object never came into existence. If I try to close that non-existent file object, I get that old unbound local error that identifier has not been set and hasn't come into existence yet. So to use this form, you have to check to make sure that the file object close works, and that takes another try except which form do you like better this one or the other one up to you the good news is that there are context handlers or context managers and we'll make our own right now and you'll see how easy it is the file opening facility itself is a context manager that's why we can use the with with it here's my print file where i'm going to use my own context manager this is the same main as we've been running all along. This print file also has a fail on read defaulted argument. It has a try except wrapped around my with indentation. That looks just like when we have just an open. Well, what's interesting to us is what does that open close look like? Well, that's a class. Very easy to write class. If you make a class that has a magic init, a magic enter, and a magic exit, then the with keyword knows how to work with it. On the line that has the with, the interpreter will go into the magic init. Okay, here we stored these data. And then it'll go straight into the enter. So both of these methods happen in the with line, but the magic enter returns something. And that something then is labeled as file object because I asked it to. And then when the unindentation happens or an error is raised, which is the unindentation happening, it goes in the exit. This is the exception type that happened, the exception value. And 
the exception traceback. We're going to look at these guys later when we learn all about exceptions. The exception type is the exception type that was raised. Well, that was very easy, and it produces the same output, except when we ask for the exception type, when everything was successful, here it is. There's the none. When we got the fail on reading, then that was an OS error. And then when we had the absent file, we got that one. Now, the idea is that some smart person in your group is going to write some context handlers that are useful for your projects. And you will import a module full of context handlers and use them, keeping your code simple. So here we have, in context 2, we're importing that context file that we just wrote. And now we're going to write a file. So we have a file name and a text. We're going to open and close, but it accepts a second argument. And that's some text to write. So we're going to open it for writing like that and then write our text. And that's what happens. Our test is we're writing in the file name sometimes. Sometimes you win. And then when we look at it, yes, it happened. That's it. Give the exercise a try. I'll see you.